Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Today is the final episode on my how to record, mix, master, and sell a song like a pro. Um, it's been a fun series and I'm super glad you guys are enjoying it and learning from it. It, you know, that's the goal here. So we're of course going to continue talking about the everything bundle from Slate Digital because I a, I love it. B, it's super inexpensive and it's powerful. It sounds great. It's a no-brainer. If you're on, if you are on GarageBand and trying to just beef up your results, just get the Everything Bundle and learn how to use it. There's a ton of tutorials over there as well. Um, but anyway, this is what I love about it. Let me show you. It is super, super easy. There are other applications out there, I'm aware, that are more powerful, do a lot more things. However, if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to screw up your mix. And that's what I like about this particular application is there's basically no way to screw it up if you're following the guidelines that I'm about to talk about, right? Um, but anyway, we're going to come back to this and I got to show you what I did before this happens in the, in the signal path. This is the last thing in the path. Um, so anyway, first thing is this, right? I have the master output um, here. I got a little bit of a vintage pre going and a tiny bit of EQ happening. And I will just sort of play um, with and without the EQ just so you can hear, but just so you can see, uh, I got this shaved off to about 147. This is the low end. Here's the high end is shaved down to 16K. Bumped out a little bit of the 200, nothing here. A little bump out of the 2K, um, just because my voice on a 57, there's a lot of that 2K range in there. Um, nothing here, left that just the way it is. Pretty basic small EQ. Let me play it. I started to scream. Okay, so you should have heard. It just got rid of a lot of the, um, the, the muddiness and the fatness of that kick drum, um, which again, it's going to come back in a little bit in the mastering, but as you raise the volumes of all of these instruments, those like super thuddy sounds like bass or kick drum, they will just throw your master out of mic, uh, out of whack rather. It's, you know, you're just turning up all that mud. So you want to make sure you get rid of the mud before you start turning it up. Okay, pretty simple thing. Now, of course, I'm also going to use the tape machine here. I have it set to half inch two track, which is, you know, mastering uh, FG 456 tape type. And I have it turned up to about here. It's super subtle what this does, but it is really good you guys <laughs> this thing is really good okay so no, no gain anything going on here this is more of a, a tone thing um okay now let's get to the actual mastering process how about that okay so this top section is the compressor this is all about levels and here are your meters and some more meters sweet love meters with numbers on them so the number one thing you have to know when you're mastering, okay, especially using this particular plugin, um, the numbers that you're looking for are this right here. The RMS figure is the most important part of this puzzle, okay? Um, you cannot, or let's say this, you do not want to go over negative 10 on this RMS. So um, that is, of course, we're going, we're starting at, what was this, negative 98, right? So we're basically going from zero up, to, or sorry, negative 100, let's say, to up to zero. So negative um, 10 RMS is what we're looking for. A little bit over that we can live with, you know, um, as we get closer to nine. Um, it's, you know, we just, we don't want to do it too much, but 10 is the target number, okay? Negative 10. So let's just turn it on. So actually, let's say this. I'm going to compress it first, right? And I'm going to do this. I like the compressor to act um, pretty slowly or quickly. I like it to react quickly and release, you know, medium. What we want this to do is basically live zero to one. Is I tend to master or compress my masters pretty lightly, um, especially in a song like this. There's not a lot of major peaks going on. So I can probably start around here. Okay, so I'm just going to do that. Let's see what happens. And we're, oh, let's go back to the loudest part of the song too. I started to scream. Oh, got to turn it on. <laughs> turn it on. All right. 
simple, okay? Um, I'm happy with that. It's right under negative one. That was pretty good <laughs> as far as pointing and shooting. Okay, so we're going to turn up the low punch, which is really nice and subtle. Um, we're going to put back a little bit of what we just shaved out on the top and bottom end, but not so much that it's going to freak everything out. Okay, a uh, little bit of those transients are gonna come in. Now, dynamic perception, very important knob here. Uh, this is really important if you have a song like this one where the, there are great dynamics, which we don't wanna lose, right? Um, so if you were to have like a really loud heavy metal song or something like that, you would probably leave this at zero and actually crank this guy as, up as much as you want. Um, these two are sort of determining your dynamic range, okay? So I'm gonna sort of put it down here around seven let's say that we're going to keep those dynamics nice and smooth and we're going to turn the perception up to about four okay so that's that now the big knob this is the big deal okay we're going to start turning the whole mix up and i'm going to do this from the loudest part of the song um, there's a nice long double chorus here at the end so we'll use that um, and so again you're going to be looking here on the left and right and we're going for negative 10 okay I'll, and when I click on this, just so you know, it does the sort of zero it out. Well, not zero it out, but anyway, here we go. I threw my glass. I punched a hole right through the wall. I didn't notice that you had left. Because I had finally lost control. Okay, let's go back. I started to scream I threw my glass I punched a hole right through the wall I didn't notice That you had left Cause I had finally lost control mm -hmm. I had finally... Okay, so that's interesting right there. Um, that is that little lead guitar coming in. So there's a very slight issue here between those two, uh, the left and right. So I'm going to just crank up the compression threshold about that much, quite a bit. Um, let's make sure that's not too much. Green. Ah, I threw my glass. Ah, ah, and I'm going to dial this guy back uh, 0.3. So we're 10, 5. There we go. So, let's try this again. I threw my glass I punched a hole right through the wall I didn't notice That you had left Cause I had finally lost control back it out even more so that is 0.4 okay so I wanted to do this six about here I think so I want to bring this down let's say just 10 dB let's see what happens there I, threw my, I started to scream So it's still cranking a little bit. So let's push this up a little bit more. This is sort of the fine, fine balance of this. Um, now, of course, I could go into the mix and try to identify what is pushing on, on uh, what is this, the left, uh, sorry, the right side. Um, but uh, I, I don't have to do that because I, I have already done that. And I, I like the guitar where it is. So I'm going to just try to accommodate it in the mastering process. It's, I don't know. It's up to you what you think about that or not. I can live with it um, because, I mean, point two is pretty negligible. Now I have to get it out of my computer. So what I'm going to do is, or out of GarageBand, I'm going to go up to show. Oh, first, aha, I got to say this because I, I don't think I've ever said this in a video. Um, go up to GarageBand preferences. Make sure um, that all of the things like this, export projects at full loudness, do not have that selected. That 
never have this selected. Let's put it this way. Don't ever select that box. If you want to master like a pro, um, just turn that off. Okay. Uh, all of this stuff is basically the same. Okay. Um, so just that particular thing, export thing unchecked. Okay. So now I'm going to come up here. I'm going to go to share. I'm going to hit export song to disc and it's going to then of course spit it out. Well, we're looking at a client's thing right now. <laughs> <laughs> active projects here we are here's everybody i'm working on okay so um so here are this is where i'm going to drop it now i'm going to also i'm going to make this um a wave file this is the most high quality file that i can export okay and then i'm going to hit export and that is basically it right super super easy um it just you know it's a matter of just fine balancing that master gain output you know you just don't want it freaking out of course, it does help to have multiple monitors, multiple sources, uh, headphones. Like if you have like low end heavy headphones, use those. You have stereo headphones, also use those. Earbuds, also use those. Um, just make sure you, if you can, go through as many different ways to hear this song before you actually, you know, try to sell it. Um, that's obviously a very common piece of advice. Okay. So, like I said, we are now, and so pretend I have exported it, which I have already. And here it is uh, sitting nicely waiting for me as a wave file. Okay. So this is um, the, the final step of it, you guys. All right. So this, I just basically, you know, this is very simple to use. I just wanted to show you guys DistroKid, talk about it again. I've already made a review for them, um, for this website, because they don't take any money from you. You get a hundred percent of the royalties back. Um, you know, anything like Spotify, Apple, Amazon, here's the list of stuff. I actually put this online and it is for sale right now. There's a mix or hmm, there's a link for it below. Um, so you can buy this right now on Amazon and Apple and all these different things right here. Uh, and I'll tell you, it took me about, I think it was about 24 hours plus or minus to get it up on all of these sources. Um, that was it. Um, it's, you know, they don't charge you to upload or anything. Um, but I, I love distro kid you guys i i know there's lots of different ways to get your stuff online but distro kid is the one that i like the best because you get to keep all the royalties um and please you know hit that link below and sign up if you're interested because you know if you're trying to sell music online and keep all the money <laughs> just use distro kid <laughs> super easy okay so that's it i don't need to show you how to use their website because it is totally self-explanatory i just wanted to make sure you knew that it existed and this is how i do it so that's it you guys so it's for sale. If you'd like to hear the song in its entirety, please buy the song. Um, if you are a Patreon person, a patron, um, if you would like a copy of this for free, send me an email over at garagebandandbeyond at gmail.com and I will happily send you a free copy of this. Um, but you do have to be a patron um, on my Patreon page and check out the Patreon page and all of the awesome rewards that are over there. So you guys, I think that's about it. I've covered everything I can in this part in this series and i really hope that you got something out of it uh, mastering i know is the biggest most complicated part or not let's say not not so complicated but let's say it's the most challenging part for most people um so that's why i made this video for you okay so uh that's it have a good day leave comments below find me on facebook and twitter and all those different places please watch all these other videos that are bubbling around my head now probably and subscribe button i think i said that like button uh you know the notification button all that kind of stuff uh bye peace